Hi everyone, my name is Henry. <clears throat> Please like and share the video down below so that everybody may be blessed. Today, we're going to discuss marriage and baptism. How are they similar? How are they alike? And how does, what's the difference? When, when we're young, we, um, we date the opposite sex and we try to find someone that's compatible with us so that when the time comes and we say, you know what, I have chosen this person to get married to. In other words, what you're doing is you're going to make a commitment to that person, male or female. You're going to go to the altar and you're going to take some marriage vows that you say you're going to abide by as long as you're committed marrying the person that you're marrying. So if you, as a woman, you take the name of your husband, his last name, to be your name, last name, from that point on. <clears throat> the commitment that you're making is you're not going to be going around messing around with any other man and, you know, you're going to be loyal to him and, and that's a commitment. These are things that you're going to live by because you're making a commitment to that person. Well, when you're choosing a God, and let's say the God of Israel, God of Moses, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, if you're choosing that God, well, you have to make a commitment. You have to make a commitment to the God that you're choosing. Now, baptism. Jesus wasn't baptized until he was 30 years old. He was baptized as a, an adult that could understand what kind of commitment he was making. Baptism is not for babies. Jesus was the example. You get baptized as an adult because you are making a commitment when you get baptized. And let me um, explain to you. When John the Baptist was preaching at the river, all the people that he was preaching to were adults. And he was teaching them, explaining to them that the commitment they had to make what they had to live by to be righteous in God's eyes, which were the commandments of God. That, that was the commitment. <clears throat> Once they understood everything that they needed to do, change their lives, and say, okay, I've chosen this God. I understand what I must live by, the commitment that I have to make. And then they say, okay, I'm ready to make that commitment. When you're ready to make that commitment to your God, you get baptized as an adult because you know what commitment you have to make or you're making and you have to live by. So marriage, baptism, it's the same thing. You're making a commitment to somebody or God and you have to live by certain rules. So marriage and commitment are real, real similar. You get married to someone as an adult <clears throat> and you understand the commitment that you're making to the person that you're going to marry and... You get married. But 
to the God that you're going to make that commitment to, you get baptized. You say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, and I'm going to make this commitment, and I'm going to get baptized. That's my understanding to you that I'm making this commitment to you. And those are the things that we have to, the way we make our commitments to either a person or God. Now, what happens if you get married to your partner and then you don't keep your commitment and you go dating other people? Well, that's what you call whoring around. That's what you call adultery. That's what you call that you took the name of your husband in vain. When you don't keep your commitment to your husband, you took his name in vain. The third commandment says, when you have chosen your God and you have made a commitment by getting baptized to him, And you don't keep your commitment to him. Then you took his name in vain. And he re realistically telling you that if you're not making your commitment to him. And you're going out and lighting candles to somebody else. Or, or you're praying to, you know, these other statutes and stuff or. You know, breaking the commandments of God. The commitment that you said you were going to do. That you were going to change your life accordingly to God's commandments. If you don't do that, then you took his name in vain. Thank you. And I hope this was uh, helpful, and hopefully it'll help out somebody out there trying to find God and trying to understand why you get baptized and why you get married to God and the commitment that we have to make, whether it's a husband or a wife or a God. Baptism and marriage is the same thing. You have to make a commitment and you should keep your commitment <clears throat> to your spouse or God. If you're not going to live by the commitment that you make to God, with the understanding that you have to live by certain rules, then anything that we may believe that this is our God and we don't keep our commitment. You have taken his name in vain. So if you're making a commitment, please understand that God wants to bless you. And he wants to be your God. And he wants to see that you are making your commitment. That you're living by the rules that he sets. Just like when we get married, we have rules. We promise this, we promise that, and we have to live by that. Same thing with God. So, hope this gives us a little better understanding of baptism. Babies, you don't baptize babies because they don't understand what kind of commitment that they're making and what they have to live by, and that's just a waste of time. That's... Uh, babies don't know what kind of commitment they're making. But an adult understands what kind of commitment they're making and what kind of life-changing events they have to do in their life to comply with God's rules. May God bless you, keep you safe, 
שלום.